InstaSpin FOC Launch Pad and Booster Pack Training Series, Part 2, Identifying Your Motor. Okay, I'm getting started right where the quick start guide left off. You can see that I've set up my launch pad and my booster pack combination. I've attached it to the Anaheim or Telco 24 volt motor. This is the motor that ships with a lot of our DRV8312 kits. So I'm using that one as an example. It's one that is very readily available. I've hooked up power supply to my booster pack. What I've actually done is taken two of the 24 volt, two and a half amp supplies that come with our DRV8312 kits. So I now have five amp capability. Um, that's good because this motor is, uh, is rated as a four amp motor and it can pull um, four to five amps on a really high acceleration, D accelerations. So what I'm gonna do first is I've already built project uh, 5B just like in the quick start guide. And uh, this will let me uh, change the gains of the speed in the current controllers once I've identified the motors. But first, I'm going to go ahead and, and do a fresh identification and show you that process. So I'm going to enable the system. I'm going to make sure I deselect the user.h. If I keep this selected, when I hit run, it's just going to load in any stored parameters. And right now, I don't have those for this motor necessarily. So when doing a motor ID, you deselect user.h. You can keep these uh, default settings for the recalculations on, although during the identification process, it does these anyways. By selecting run, it'll start the identification phase. You can see that um, we can follow along here. I moved into the online phase of R over L. Before it did that, it actually calculated the offsets. So we have our voltage and our current offsets here. And these are a scaled representation of the voltage and current in the system based on our full scale voltage and our first full scale current settings that you can change in the user.h. So you can see we identified our resistance and now we're ramping up to the speed that we've identified um, in the user.h file as the speed for identification. And you can see that we're looking at the flux and have narrowed in on the rate of flux. We've now moved into the inductance phase. So we're now actually injecting a little bit of uh, negative ID current, field weakening, and using that for the inductance test. And you can see that we're zeroing in on that inductance as well. One of the important things to note is that the motor has been spinning the entire time since the ramp up phase began. So you need to make sure that the motor does ramp up to the target speed and that it stays spinning the entire time through the flux and through the inductance estimations. If at any time it stops during those, then you know that there's an issue. So our motor identified light has come on. That means that the state machine has finished without an error. It doesn't mean that your parameters are necessarily correct. So in the quick start guide, I go through some sanity checking of the parameters to see if they make sense. And with certain motors, you may have to um, go through this a couple times by changing some scaling, changing some, some different um, things like the PWM frequency, uh, the voltage input, the voltage scaling, uh, to be able to identify your motor. But I've identified mine here. You can see uh, I have a resistance of 0.4 ohms. I have 0.6 microhenries of inductance about 0.03 volts per hertz. I've also done some other calculations as part of kind of the sanity check and just getting an understanding of this motor. I've calculated the short circuit current of about nine amps. And this is typical for a lot of motors. They, they tend to be about two times the rated current. Uh, when you get up into um, other types of motors, the lower the inductance, the higher the short circuit current is gonna be. And it might be even much higher than the rated current. I've also done some other checks here. I've taken resistance divided by inductance, and that gives you a good idea of the maximum theoretical speed of the motor. Um, and I've used that to actually update my full scale frequency to a value that makes sense. Also, during the identification, as the uh, values for flux became accurate, this gives me a good variable check that I explained in the quick start guide to make sure that I, I choose the best selection for my full scale voltage that makes sense for my system. So the next thing I like to do is to go ahead and start the motor uh, just to make sure that it identified correctly and it seems like it's, it's uh, running pretty well. 
So in this case, I'll turn off my resistance and offset calculations. Um, excuse me, I will leave my offset calculation on. Because I have not saved these values, I want it to do an offset again before it starts. If I turn off the offset calculation, it's going to load whatever is in the user.h file, which may be inaccurate. In fact, oftentimes will be inaccurate. Um, so until we load that in our user.h, we want to go ahead and do another offset calculation. And I'm going to go ahead and run the motor uh, just to a speed, a nominal speed, and make sure that it seems like it's running okay. So it starts up, and I'm running very good at 500 RPMs. Um, at this point, my, uh, my current controllers, of course, have been automatically tuned by InstaSpin FOC, but my speed controllers have not. So in the next segment, we'll go into how we uh, can tune those speed controllers through a manual process if you don't want to go through the, the, the calculations yourself.